In today's video, proof from my man Steven that a calorie is not just a calorie. Hey guys, what's going on? This is Paul Ravella from ProPhysique.com and if you don't remember Steve Bogran because it's been a minute, well, he's back. Science with Steve. Ah. <laughs> First of all, check out Steven's channel below because he discusses these topics and many more when it comes to physique enhancement, losing body fat, adding muscle, doing all those fun things. And you brought me a fun study today. Yeah, I do like this study. It was one that I also commented on for Dr. Campbell's Body by Science articles, which if you haven't checked those out, those are also a really cool resource to make research papers a little bit more understandable and maybe get some of the input from professionals working in the industry. Yeah, so Dr. Campbell heads up the exercise science program over here at University of South Florida. We've both taken classes under him. He's got a master's degree under him. I'll put the link to his research review down below. But this study was looking at individuals and they would come in and essentially looking at the thermic effect of food or how many calories you burn digesting this food source between two meals. Pretty much same meal. The macros did differ a little bit. The calorie content was the same but one was simply more processed and one was less processed. Well, first things first, describe or explain what something being processed or not processed means. Right, so a processed food is generally gonna have higher fiber intake for carbohydrates, right? So it's going to be a more complex molecule. Processed foods are gonna be things like white bread versus wheat bread typically speaking, yeah. or a whole grain bread. That's one of the really easy examples for whole food versus more processed food. Yeah, so us in the fitness space and trying to lose body weight space, we kind of look at whole foods as the, the golden child, right? We know that those are the best options. Now, I'm someone that preaches macros and I found this study to be very interesting because in my mind, if something is calorically equal, at least what's on the label, you would think you're gonna extract the same amount of calories out of it. But let's talk about how they determine what those calories are and why there might be some differences between what's on the label and what your body actually does. Yeah, so when we're determining what a calorie is, it's a unit of measurement of energy, essentially. And so we determine that by sticking something in what we call a bomb, bomb calorimeter, and we essentially set it on fire. And how much heat it produces is how many calories it produces. Um, and so even though these same food sources might produce the same amount of heat and have that actual same calorie value, how we have to digest those and pull those calories out is different from just setting something on fire. Yeah, the digestive system is a little bit more complex than a bomb calorimeter. And so there's also something, you know, in food that's more adherent than just calories. Like you can't just look at a food and say, well, it's got the same amount of calories as another food. There's also minerals and things like that that can have such value for us. So when we look at the calories burned throughout a given day, thermic effect of food plays kind of a small role in those total calories throughout the day. So if you're just interested in average weight loss, if someone's just tracking their macros and they're hitting their calorie goals, they're probably gonna be fine, right? Probably gonna be okay. So where is something like whole food versus processed food gonna really start to play a role? So I think it plays a role in terms of our eating habits and our associations with food, which can be positive for anybody, period. Uh, it also is going to be, like you said, important for micronutrient intake, things like your vitamins and minerals. And that can have an impact in terms of how you feel, your energy levels, your perception, your ability to concentrate, and a whole slew of other things as well as those more fibrous food sources, guess what? They have more fiber, which helps us with things like digestion, moving stuff through, having good movements. Uh, but when it comes to the thermic effect of food here, and this study was essentially showing between a more processed and less processed food source, about a 65 calorie difference on the thermic effect of food per meal. So if you do only three meals per day, that's still almost 200 calories per day of a difference in terms of your net calories that you're getting from that. Right, and I've, I've got to believe that if you're getting that much less calories out of something, your body is breaking that down, it's probably going to speed up the process of perhaps getting hungrier again. And this is where we run into this thing that processed food is not as good for us because in the end, you might end up not only burning less calories digesting it, you might end up eating more because you're not as full. Absolutely, and that's one of the other considerations that we're always talking to people about is, you know, these same calories amounts can be very different because of how we actually feel with them. So not even just energy levels, but the fact of the matter is, is I'm going to get a lot more calories out of broccoli than I'm going to get out of Fruity Pebbles. <laughs> Both solid options, <laughs> but the volume of food, my feeling of fullness is going to be very different from one and the other. Yep. 
Yeah, I, I like when they do like a plate comparison. I'll probably put a graphic up here where you see like what 100 calories from, from a sugary food looks like versus 100 calories from like a vegetable source. And food volume, actually people do study this. It's called volumetrics. Is Yeah, it's, a, it's, a, it's another kind of offshoot of nutrition um, is the volume of the food that you eat, that the literal size of the food that you eat can have a, an impact on how much we eat. Now, for those of us that are tracking calories, tracking macros, I don't think it's as much of an issue, although I always prefer to get my food from whole food sources. I'm also not afraid to include something that might be a little more sugary, might digest a little bit quicker if it's in the guise of, hey, A, I want to enjoy it, or B, it's just convenient. Yeah, and I also think it matters for where you're at in your dieting phase. If you're dieting really hard and the hunger signaling is high, and you're like, man, this is this is a lot more difficult for me to be adherent to and to stick with, probably much better bet to stick with more of those whole foods, yeah. less processed options. Yeah. If you're in the midst of, hey, I'm trying to eat more to put on muscle or to reverse or to do a myriad of other things in life, hey, I like take a couple of Oreos, make them fit, like make them work. Ain't nothing yeah. wrong with that. Yeah, I think uh, my buddy Lane Norton describes it best as a budget, right? So when you have a very small budget of calories, if you're trying to get shredded and get on a bodybuilding stage and your meals are, you know, getting smaller, you wanna make sure that you're leaning more on whole foods to keep you fuller longer and to provide more value. Whereas if you're at the opposite end of the spectrum, you're pounding food all day and sometimes digestion can become an issue, it might even benefit you to eat some junk, sugar or processed foods Otherwise, you're not gonna be able to get that food in without having some digestive distress. Yeah, and if you're like me, who has trouble putting on weight, it can be yeah. tough to hit those calorie goals. So using things like maybe a barbecue sauce to add carbohydrates or whole milk to add fats, those kind of things can sometimes be really beneficial for me when I'm not hungry, but I still have goals to meet in terms of what I need on this end of the spectrum we don't talk about as much. Yeah, so we've heard the term a calorie is not just a calorie, but when you think of a calorie as a unit of measure in a bomb kilometer, they are literally the exact same thing because they're measuring how much heat is being used to, to burn it up. However, our bodies are not as simple as a bomb kilometer. There is multiple stages to digestion and those processes are gonna be impacting our energy throughout the day, our focus throughout the day, our hunger throughout the day. So when possible, and I think we all know this, choose good whole foods that you digest well, that you enjoy, um, and use processed foods kind of sparingly. Yeah, absolutely. There's nothing wrong with processed foods, all things in moderation. So as long as we're using them in a way that helps us to our goals, helps us to make sure that we're not yeah. feeling like we can't have them or like it's the last time we'll ever have them when we do, yeah. should be just fine. Yeah, and I'm gonna go eat some Pop-Tarts. <laughs>